Not the only new black eye for the IRS tonight. Get this, questionable, maybe even shady, or maybe even illegal contracting practices at the IRS. House Oversight Committee Chair Daryl Issa releasing a new report. Chairman Issa joins us. Nice to see you, sir. Well, thanks for having me on, and, and thanks for continuing to, con you know, to cover the most dysfunctional agency one could imagine on so many fronts. Uh, I think a lot of citizens would agree with you. All right, before I even get to the whole contracting business, I want to talk about Lois Lerner. Friday, there's some. Uh, you're going to have uh, at least a meeting about her. We are. We're going to meet to consider whether she waived her Fifth Amendment rights in the way that she gave, swore, then gave multiple testimony before asserting Fifth Amendment rights. What do you mean meeting? Who's going to be there? Is she going to be there? No, no. It'll be members of the committee, and we'll seek. We've sought counsel from the House, the Independent House Counsel, and we'll make a decision about whether or not that sequence of event did, as Trey Gowdy suggested, waived her rights. You don't get to pick and choose when you say one thing and then won't answer questions. Questions about what you've said, and uh, Congressman Gowdy brought that. We're now going to consider it. For the life of me, I, I've known her lawyer for a long time. I've been around this town a long time. For the life of me, I don't understand why he put her in a position where she even has, where you're even debating it. They, she could easily have taken the fifth, said nothing further, gone out on the steps of the U.S. Capitol and said her piece. Uh, but instead, now uh, she's in this precarious position. But we'll find out what happens on Friday. Um, if you do, uh, if she has, to, if she has uh, waived it, you're going to then call her back. We're then going to try to get full testimony, get to the truth, which. We we believe she can be very helpful in. All right, let's go to this, uh, the IRS contracting. What in the world is going on there? Um, we have the IRS Deputy Director Gregory Roseman testifying, as well as the President Chief Executive Officer of Strongcast. I don't know why he's showing, why they're showing up tomorrow, because the report is rather, uh, at least if I were these two, I'd be a little concerned. Well, they're asserting that they've done nothing wrong legally. Uh, our report endeavors to lay out the facts. It's one of those, you know, we'll give you the facts, you decide. Uh, but it certainly seems like it's not the intent of Congress. It's not the intent of the American people. But what is it that, I mean, the, the, what's the deal? Is it Roseman awarded these contracts, uh, probably the biggest contracts, to someone who he's friends with? Is that the, is that that's, the suggestion from the report? That's the beginning. A, a friend of now 10 years, uh, one of, that he appears to have coaxed and helped him through the process. But there's a sequence of events that we lay out in our, in our uh, report. One of them is, here's an individual who has a small accident, apparently, while playing ball at the prep school. This is not even the Army Academy, but this is a prep school he attended for a few months. And 27 years later, after playing college football, he, a few months before buying this company and claiming to be a service-connected uh, disabled veteran, he comes in and says, yes, I've got pain in my ankle, gets a 30% disability. Then you moves his company that he bought, bought for a few dollars, really. It was a very $200,000, $250,000 in business. He moves it into what had formerly been called a hub zone. This is a historically underutilized zone, but it's a zone that in Washington, D.C. that actually is no longer, it's by the Verizon Center, it's no longer underappreciated. It's just an office. It's just an office. His real business is out in Leesburg, Virginia. His real business is out where rich people like himself live. He then gets what is effectively a set of preferences to get to go from a company that's never done more than 250,000 in a year to having 43 million dollars of actual booked income in the first year and 500 million dollars in contracts as we sit. And is it is Gregory Roseman the one who is, gives the sign off on all these contracts? Not completely. Roseman signed off on some, but appears to have advocated in a strong and perhaps inappropriate way for a, a, a multitude of them. What we're trying to look at is an agency in crisis. The IRS, when we brought this to their attention, we expected quick action. As we speak today, even though this is not a hub zone, even though he made false statements in his application and they, the Small Business Administration has pulled that designation, there's still a quarter of a billion dollar contract that the IRS is buying off of and says they can't stop buying off of it because it's too critical. Well, there, I have a couple quick things. One is that there's also a bizarre set of, of taxes that going back and forth between the two of them, some of which are, are, are uh, slurs on, on gay people, as, as I understand, really poor. But, but um, the second thing is, why in the world is, uh, are these two showing up tomorrow? If, I mean, I don't, I don't get that. If you've got a lot of, I mean, a lot of the stuff I read in the report, my advice to them was, uh, don't show up, take the lowest learner out. Well, 
we never know. They one or the other or both of them might, uh, and they're both represented by counsel. But at this point, they're both denying any wrongdoing, even though this looks wrong on the face of it. And the important thing I is, look, if you can't, I mean, if you're saying that you're getting a special deal because you're a disabled vet because of a prep school injury, not combat, you didn't serve an active duty. I mean, you know, look. I, Whatever I'm just saying is that, that I, I wouldn't be I wouldn't be appearing well, tomorrow. <laughs> and, and Greta, both Mr. Cummings and myself are on the right side of this for, and together, in that these set asides, if you believe in them, should go to small and disadvantaged oh, companies yeah, yeah. No, and, and real impacted zones. So at a minimum, they put half a billion dollars in the hands of somebody who was already wealthy, rather than where it was intended to go. Well, he may they may be 100 percent innocent of any wrongdoing. There may be no criminal wrongdoing, but I've looked at the report and I think the Department of Justice should also take a look at it as well not just uh, your committee but we'll see we'll see whether or not he shows up tomorrow nice to see you sir thank you Greta